Good day, grade 6 learners. This is Teacher Joy. And our lesson for today is Lesson 3, Solutions. What is a solution? A solution is a combination of solid, liquid, or gaseous materials that are mixed thoroughly, that neither component can be absorbed independently of the other. For example, when you completely dissolve salt in water, you form a solution. You can no longer see a trace of salt. Its presence is only evident by the salty taste of the solution. Solutions are generally transparent, although they may be colored. Some may think that all solutions are liquid. In contrast, solutions come in all phases. There are solid, liquid, and gas solutions seen in daily life. Liquid solutions Black coffee, soft drink or soda, gasoline, and top water. Gas solution Example is air. Solid solutions 18 karat gold, brass, steel. All of these are solutions because they contain one or more materials mixed together and the mixture form is a uniform or homogeneous. Liquid solutions are composed of a solid dissolved in liquid or liquid dissolved in another liquid or a gas dissolved in liquid. Moreover, air is a mixture of different gases such as nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, water, methane, and some other gases. And lastly, the solid solutions mentioned above are called alloys. Alloys are solid solutions of metals or non-metals dissolved in metals. What are the uses of solutions? Solutions are all around us. Air, for example, is a solution composed of various gases as mentioned earlier. Water, present in lakes, oceans, rivers, is not pure but has dissolved minerals and impurities. Different solutions are used in everyday life. Salt and sugar solutions are used to add flavor to the food you eat. Liquid soaps, unsuitable solvents dissolve grease and stain from clothes when washing or dry cleaning. Beverages such as tea, coffee, and soft drinks are solutions. More medicines taken internally to cure diseases are prepared as solutions. In the process of digestion, the food that you eat is changed into soluble form because the blood distributes or carries it to the different cells of the body. Moreover, metal alloys, which are also considered as solutions, are used in construction materials such as steel bars and metal fixtures such as bolts, screws, hinges, doorknobs, and locks. In spoons and forks, pans, and other cooking utensils, and other metal alloy crafts. Solute versus solvents. It is made up of a solute and a solvent. Solute is the substance being dissolved, example, salt, sugar, coffee powder, and juice powder. Solvent is the substance that dissolves the solute. It is usually the substance that is present in greater quantity than the solute. The most common solvent is water. It is called the universal solvent because it can dissolve so many substances. Other solvents are alcohol, acetone, kerosene, and acetic acid. Some solutes are soluble in a certain solvent but not in other solvents. An example 
is salt which is soluble in water but not in kerosene. Nail polish is soluble in acetone but not in water and alcohol. Types of solution Solid solution consists of a solute which can be in any phase and a solvent in solid phase. Example of solid solutions are steel, bronze, charcoal, filter, dental amalgam, alloys, and gold jewelry. Number 2. Liquid solution Consists of a solute which can be in any phase dissolved in a liquid solvent. Examples of liquid solutions are that have liquid solutes and liquid solvents or vinegar and alcohol. Other examples of liquid solutions in other paste, soda, wine, ocean water, and syrup. The same is true for vinegar and alcohol, which mix well with water. They are massable in water. Liquid that cannot mix in any proportion are said to be immiscible. Oil and water are examples of immiscible liquids. Number 3. Gas solution consists of a gas solute and gas solvent. Example, air and cooking gas. Solutions are generally composed of solute and solvent. The solute is the substance that gets dissolved in the solvent in a solution. It is usually present in lesser amount than the solvent. A solution may contain one or more kind of solutes in it. On the other hand, the solvent is the dissolving medium or the one that dissolves the solute in a solution. It is usually present in higher amount than the solute. For example, if you completely dissolve a spoonful of a salt in a glass of water, you will form a salt solution where salt is the solute and water is the solvent. In this example, the solute is solid or salt and the solvent, water, is liquid. The phase of this solution is liquid. The phase of the solution depends mainly on the solvent used. Solutions can also be gases dissolved in liquids such as carbonated water found in soda water and soft drinks or carbonated drinks. There can also be gases in other gases such as nitrogen and oxygen in air and liquids in liquids, such as in the case of rubbing alcohol which is usually 70% alcohol and 30% water. Moreover, there are also solid solid solutions. They usually start off as solid, gas, liquid, liquid solutions, and then harden at room temperature. Alloys, as mentioned earlier, are good examples of solid solutions at room temperature. For example, copper and zinc dissolve in each other and harden to form brass. Whereas iron, carbon, and manganese mix together to form steel. Furthermore, silver, gold, and copper form many different alloys with unique colors and appearances. Solubility of substances Solubility is the ability of a solute to dissolve in a given amount of solvent. Soluble substances are solutes that easily dissolve in a given solvent. Semi-soluble substances are those that dissolve a little. Insoluble do not dissolve at all. What conditions affect the formation of a solution? Have you ever observed someone, maybe your mom or dad, prepares a cup of coffee? In which condition will coffee granules dissolve at a faster rate? When placed in boiling water or in a lukewarm water? With stirring or without stirring? 
which form of salt will dissolve faster in water? Granulated or powdered? Can you form a solution by mixing oil and water? Certain conditions affect the way the solute and solvent interact with each other to form a solution, namely, stirring, heating, the size of the solute, and the nature of the solute and the solvent. The stirring moves the solvent particles around, allowing them to interact with the solid pieces of undissolved solute and transporting the dissolved solute away into the bulk of the solution. In the absence of stirring, the concentration of solute will be highest close to the pieces of solute, so more solute won't dissolve into the solution until the dissolved solute has been transported away by diffusion. For example, sugar dissolves faster in water when stirred. When we don't stir, only some of the sugar granules will dissolve readily and some may settle at the bottom. Heating causes the particles of the liquid solvent to move at a faster rate and thus has a greater chance of interacting with the solid solute causing it to dissolve readily. For example, coffee or sugar dissolve faster in hot water than in cold water. The size of the solute also affects the dissolving process. For a given amount of solute, the smaller the particle size or the greater is its surface area, which allows more solute solvent contact and interaction to happen. Pounding of a solid solute into powder form will increase the rate of dissolving process. For example, a sinigang mixed powder dissolves more easily than sinigang mixed cubes when mixed with water. The nature of the solute and the solvent determines whether they will form a solution or not. There are substances whose nature and composition do not match such that they cannot form solutions with each other. For example, oil and water have very different nature, so they do not mix with each other. Sand also cannot form solution with water. In the same way, salt does not dissolve in oil.